Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, episode, what, 74? Behind the Tool Belt with T.C. Backer, uh, Chris Baker, and uh, tonight our special guest is Thomas Golden with T.C. Backer, our top producer. We thought we'd uh, give a little shout out to him tonight and uh, go over, you know, a couple little local things that we have going on. Um, we have our June 17th food drive that we're going to discuss tonight. We're going to talk about uh, GAF Master Elite. We're going to talk about our warranties that they offer, uh, not just manufacturer warranties, but our workmanship warranties. Um, we're going to talk about uh, probably, uh, you know, the components that, that go along with our GAF products that, that require that, that are required to get the warranties. warranties. Yep, you know, so we got the, the, the System Plus warranty, we got the Silver Silver, and we got the uh, Golden Pledge warranties that we're gonna discuss tonight. And, uh, but really, you know, I really wanted to make most of the focus and, and topic on on you, Tom. Um, you know, that uh, you are you play a big, huge, crucial uh, part in, in all of this. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and the part of the company where we're really trying to grow and be successful. And, You've been a huge part of that uh, success. Uh, I really want to. I want you to know that. I know we don't, you know, talk heart to heart right. talks. You know, we do, we don't. But most of it's just business and mm -hmm. and trying to figure things out and, and and get through it, navigate through it together. And and you've been a, a you know intricate part in that learning process. And you know, and, and thank you for your patience and, and time and and your talent. I so. Give it. Give us a little background. Who Who's Tom Golden? I mean, you don't have to get into all the gory stuff. Kind of give us <laughs> give us the sugar coated version of, of who Tom, Thomas Golden is. I mean, you know, I've, I've worked for many a company. Um, started out in financial back in the two thousand no, ninety three. Sorry, um, when I came out of the Marine Corps, and I did fifteen years of uh, mortgages, owning my own company, and and then in two thousand eight, the, the the market obviously took a turn. And I got into home improvements. I became a regional with Bath Fitter, Kitchen Saver, um, and um, was a regional with Household Finance back in the day. A lot of people can, uh, my age, can uh, understand that company that then went out of business in 2008 with Beneficial, Avco, and all those good finance companies that charge you 30%. So I knew I had to make a change. So I went through the home improvement business. I was lucky enough to uh, run a whole state for Household Finance, 18 branches and things wow. like that. And uh, I got a regional job with Bath Fitter right there at Lewisbury Road and, um, and took off from there. And, and that squirted me into uh, working for Lowe's. I ran 13 stores for them. And, you know, it's, it's just come down to, I was with a company prior to here, and I'm not going to mention the name, where I wasn't comfortable with the company and the way that people were being treated. And, and I'll just leave it at that. And, and I, 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 what can I say? I, I suffocated you for about six months, mm -hmm. yes, try, try, trying to get in your ear um, because Ty's a very busy man, and like he said earlier, you know I'm pretty much hands off once I get the ball rolling and learn. I've been here going on four months, so it's been some growing, and it's been a lot of growing in my my um, development because I used to be the guy that ran a sales system, I ran sales people, I ran sales managers, but I never got into the nuts and bolts of what that looks like on the back end. How many pieces of this do we need? How many mm -hmm. pieces of that do we need? Right, right. And I made a, a, a few mistakes that I've learned from. Uh, one being a barn, one of the biggest things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what I'm talking yeah, about around yeah, the corner. Yeah. Um, but I'm not ashamed or, or, or not humbled enough to admit that. And I've learned so much in four months and, and, and it's just a testament that why people want to work at TC Backer. And I was just sharing with Vic who never gets enough credit for doing the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vic. Um, do a great job. But I was just, you know, Lauren was in your office with me today and and, and I was just thinking, this, this, there's, there's no better feeling that this is a family, this is home. And it's it's a, not even a said thing, it's just culture. And, and when you have that in a company, you wanna go that extra mile. Mm -hmm. You wanna work your butt off. You wanna help your clients. You wanna succeed and, and make everything seamless for everybody. Right. Um, sometimes I don't make it seamless just being newer to the back end of this, but I have a great support system with Glenn, um, with anybody, really you, if I can knock on your door and you're available, yep. Lauren, um, Baker, anybody I can go to, Denny, 
you know, and, and things like that. Vic, if I have a question, I'll pop in on him, even though he's he's a very busy man as well. So I just wanted to give a shout out to just the whole company and appreciation that why I'm here. Um, and, and I truly feel I've ran multi-billion dollar companies, divisions of them, and I've never had the culture that I have here. That's awesome, man. Thank you for saying that because I know that's something I've, I've managed um, other companies before I went out on my own and there was a lot of learning curves o over the years and I was put in a position at a very young age and the only way that I was taught was to run things with an iron fist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've been on both ends of that spectrum of, you know, not feeling appreciated, you know, busting my butt, you know, every day, day in, day out, not feeling like I was recognized or, you know, I, I, I managed the, the last company that, that I had worked for, you know, I would be the guy canceling doctor's appointments and dentist right. appointments and coming home early from vacations right. when I don't even know where the owners are. Right. You know what I mean? It was, you know, I did the scheduling. I was the service department. I ordered the materials. I mean, we, the only thing that I didn't do was sign the checks and, and, and I was the face of the company, which I, I dug it. You, you know what I mean? Right. I did it. I loved it. I thrived on it, but there was a lot of bumps along the road. To, to learn how to treat people and how to treat certain people certain ways. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Some people you gotta be a little more aggressive with before they get it through their head. Some people you can't be, <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just gotta, you, you gotta finesse things and, mm -hmm. and figure it out and navigate those waters and, and, and try to push people out of their comfort zone. Glenn posted something the other night that I just thought was fantastic. Um, and Glenn, Glenn's like you were speaking earlier, Glenn and Denny and Derek and, and Vic and, and Chris Baker and Brandon. Brandon's Brandon. one that Brandon. doesn't get enough mm -hmm. recognition. That kid, I give him a task to, to do or ask him, I don't even have to worry about it. Yep. I don't even have to worry about same it. Whether, with, same with Colin. Yes, Colin, same thing. Mm -hmm. You give him something to do, don't ever have to worry about and it. And you again. can see that in the pride that they own, they, they own, they have ownership in the company, right. not ownership as far as Look, you know, right. they take pride monetary, in it. right? But you saw what Colin posted on Facebook before he went down to Maryland or Delaware, right? And he had his truck all shined up. Yes, he did. He didn't have to do that. No, you know what I mean. And he yeah. posted that and says, "All ready to go. All his ladders are there." Yep. Says he needs one more ladder, and it was yeah. kind of funny. He had twenty two on the truck. No, I'm joking. Okay. Um, but like it's it. just yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just uh, the pride of ownership here. And I was pulling out of here earlier when we broke off to, to for me to go to my appointment. I had a six o'clock, and. Um, Nice siding job on an 1838 house up here in 51 Main Street mm -hmm. in Dover. It's the second oldest house in Dover. Wow. And it was a stopping ground for people going from, from York to Dillsburg to stay at. To really? stay over at. Yep. Wow. I got a little knowledge on that house today. So yeah, it's pretty I didn't cool. know that. What, what street's that on? 51 South Main Street. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, I think I am familiar with it. Yep. Yeah. Our old house is one of the older homes in York. They'll do a little um, little tour. This this older gentleman will come through, and he'll have a group of four or five people with him. And he's he always stops in our driveway to explain like what our kitchen area is now was used to be the the, the whole entire house. And then our garage out back was the hog pen. Um, the slaughterhouse is across the alleyway, and the smokehouse. And I didn't know that we have lived there for ten plus years, Jana and I. And this gentleman, she may have known because she she grew up in that house. Um, she may have known that stuff, but I, I walked outside one day and I saw this old man. I was like, and, and a group of people, and I was like, can, can I help you? <laughs> you? You know what I mean? Because yeah. our driveway is kind of tucked back behind the barber shop, the old barber right. shop, which used to be barber shop. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, oh, we do this Dover something historical Dover. walk. Yeah, Dover historical walk. And, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he's explaining to, to what my house was. And it is stone. It's stone. It's about four. That's what theirs is. Four layers thick. Our doorways in that area of the home is that thick mm -hmm. with horsehair plaster. That's what I was just saying. To, we stuck vinyl siding over it. That's what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> right. We nailed furring. And they say the old Tom's up there was a hotel back in the day. Oh, really? And that's where people would also stay before they go to Dillsburg. Gotcha. And their buggies or whatever they cool. back then. So, yeah, I didn't know that. But I was just saying, or you know, when I left here, that I, I never truly, and, and I, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes of all companies, but, and, and I'm not here doing the tie show tonight. Um, th these are genuine feelings that I have. And, you know, I've never seen anybody work so hard 
to, to make their, their, their company better. It could be from collaboration. It could be from a great work atmosphere where we're all the same team. It could be from technology that is insane for a small company that this company has compared to even big companies. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more to come on that coming down the road. Oh, yeah. And nobody needs or knows about yet. Right, exactly. Um, but we're always innovative and we're always growing. So. Yes, for sure. That's the thing we got. And we're trying to stay up with the new technologies and to make things more seamless for, for you guys and, and for our hopefully future customers. And, you know, whether it be from lead generation to uh, our proposal making, you know, to make that process seamless. And then today we discovered something that I think we forgot about, but then remembered, you know, having a customer uh, web portal that they can go into each week. You know, if we have to order windows and it takes three or four weeks, they can see if there's any any changes that have been made. They can, you know, go back and, and if they forgot what color siding they wanted or the roof or if they want to make any changes or or just simply send a message to, hey, how are you guys doing? Are you still holding up? I see that the install date hasn't changed. And at that point in time, just an easier way for us to follow up and communicate you know, with, with our customers, which I, I think that's going to also be a game changer for us. Um, the, the new company that we're going to get, start using uh, company cam. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a game changer, not just for you, but for Vic and, and Tyler out in the field and, and Colin and Glenn and Denny and Derek and all those guys, I think, and, and Brandon and, and Baker. Um, I think that's going to be a, a total game changer for, for, you know, I just think it's one of those little one, sometimes you can just make little tweaks or add just one little tool that can be, that, that can make a huge difference, you know, and sometimes the, to, to get, sometimes it takes, you think it's going to be simple. No. Like let's let the whole job progress, no. progress. Has been a progress. progress. Yeah. On top of progress. <laughs> right. On top of progress. You know, and that was something, and not to try to toot my own horn by no means, but that's something that I thought that I was going to tackle on my own. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. You know, and there was no way. That put you on your knees, didn't it? It did. <laughs> it, burnt, it burnt me out, and that was right around the time where... Uh, you were you were showing up at my doorstep back here on the on the. I'm not ready, Tom. I'm not ready. Yeah, I'm not, I just was. It wasn't perfected yet. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but because of that, and it may have been fear, but I almost allowed fear, right, to get in the way of that growth. Right. You you know what I mean? Absolutely. And again, that was one of those learning experiences for me. You right. know, to to put my my ego, pride, fear, whatever it may have been, down and be like, okay, but this is what's going on. And honestly, it was probably more so that. Me getting honest with you, like, look, it, I, I think it, it, it's it's going to be kind of crazy at first, but you're like, okay, let's do this. Right. You know, and, and you've been a big part of that growing process. And you said four months, dude. It seems like you've been here forever. I know. It does, don't it? For real. Like, at least four years. January 15th around there. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and just to give you guys a perspective, um, what Ty's talking about and without really rolling it out yet because it's not rolled out with our future clients mm -hmm. just just think of when you if anybody's ever built a home right you get the contract that's going to go in your 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 own website portal you're going to have all your color choices in your website portal and you're going to be able to follow the contractor putting your house together the foundation was laid today yep. you can go check the portal instead of driving by the house which you're going to want to do anyway because you'll be excited right but you can have communication through that portal the whole way through to the closing of that house. Mm -hmm. So it's just the same thing with the home improvements that we're doing. The client's gonna be updated every step of the way through their own little portal, their own little website. Yep. And when the, when the windows were ordered, when we expect them, when we're gonna be at your door to install them. Right. And that just helps everybody like Lauren, myself, everybody involved with this company right. be more seamless. The, the more seamless we are, the more communication we do the more or less problems we have. Yes, exactly. And that's really what we're trying to perfect that process to make it as stressless as possible for the client and for you guys. Right. You, you know what I mean? So you guys can focus, stay motivated, stay positive, go out, help homeowners out, give them a product that by far meets or exceeds any local code. Nobody can touch any, your Yeah, any warranties on the market. We're backed by the best companies that have the, some of the oldest companies, Certainty Siding and GAF, GAF, yeah, GAF Shingles, uh, GAF, the Amer North American's largest roofing manufacturer. I mean, 
you you can't beat that. No. There, there's 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 a reason why they've been around for 150 plus years. There's a reason why they beat Tesla to the to the scoreboard and got the solo. Exactly right. <laughs> so they right. know roost. They yeah. know it. Exactly. They were already 50 percent of the way there. They just need to add solar to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that that's you know they're backing us. They 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 liked what we were doing. Um, you know to become a, a GAF master elite. That was probably one of the harder things to achieve in in uh, my career. They didn't grandfather you in. No, there was no there was no pay this fifty bucks or you know go on this and take this ten question multi right. multi answer question or open book. Yeah, no open book. You you know what I mean? It was. All these hoops and bounds, and and honestly, again, that wasn't something that I could have did on my own. Right. It was the team that helped us succeed in that. Yep. You know, to get that many warranties, to take these tests, to to use their programs, to do the training. You know, do the training again, and more training, and then more limitations, and more. You know, and then throw throw a pandemic in the mix of everything man and it was like it, it wasn't but it was so satisfying to be able to earn that and the cool thing is about it is is i don't have to worry about just any chuck and a truck becoming a master elite and taking away what our value is right you know what i'm saying because i think most people give up i think a lot of other roofing contractors out there that made bad mouth gaf because i fell into it i fell in about eight years ago i i fell into that same I thought it was going to be that easy, just overnight, a month, maybe four weeks, to become a master elite. Well, I wanted nothing to do with GAF because it wasn't easy. Right. You, you know what I mean? At some point in time, I was like, I want to be a part of that. The training that they offer, the, the portal, the, the, I mean, the every, education. The education that they provide and, and the marketing tools mm -hmm. that they, they provide, a storm training. You know what I mean? They hold a 10 week storm training um, with Wade Bond who is another uh, local roofing contractor out of Washington, D.C., one of the largest in the area for retail. Huge guy, storm chaser. I don't know if that's the right terminology to use, but he, you know, he, storm restoration's his forte. Right. There's a storm in Ohio. His team formulates a plan, goes out. And, knocks doors and gets it done. Yeah, man, and they get it done, and those are the people that I look up to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And without him and me putting down the ego and listening to what he has to say is what has helped us become master elite and then continue to put down the ego and continue to ask questions right. you know and it goes back circling back to um you know being on the other side and running things with an iron fist but now now i try to keep more of an open mind because i've been on that end of it i want it to be i don't want to i don't want to come to work and, and feel stressed out now does it happen? Of course it does. 99.9% right. .9 of the time, that's self-inflicted stress because I'm pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing myself. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? Because I'm striving for perfection. Will we ever have it? Probably mm -hmm. not. You know what I mean? But I will continue to keep pushing. And then that's where I said to you where it's like, you know, I'll push you and make you stand in your, your, your where it's not so comfortable anymore. Well, you did that tonight when I went on the siding deal. Um, you know, siding is probably the... One of the, I'm humble. One of the weaker things that I, I'm growing towards, you know, as far as getting knowledge of. And, and I asked you around 4 o'clock. I'm like, Ty, you coming out to that? It's right around the corner, Ty. It's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, my friend. You go alone. I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah. But I did what I had to do. I, you know, I got the sale. Um, and uh, we'll, get that, uh, we'll get that agreement out to him tomorrow. But the, the, the training here is just insane. I've never had so much training in four months or let alone four years. Right. Um, and it's always evolving. So the, uh, the evolution for me is that it's always something different that we're learning so it doesn't get boring. Right. You know, the evolved stone, the solar, yeah. me being new to the industry as far as the back end, the, the test for GAF, all that good stuff. Right. It's always evolving. It's always changing. And we're always busy. I've never been so busy with any other company. Right on. So I love it. Now, yeah. The worst part I got to do, like I told you before we went on here, I said the worst thing I have to do is somebody in the field is, is, is drive. Because it's so teed up with CC Backer that, you know, I, the customers pretty much have a need. I give you know, I find the problem, figure it out backwards. Well, why do we have this problem? Just like a roofing system. Yes. What's the problem? I just don't want to come out and put a roof on your house. Right. So it fails again. Exactly. You know, I had a client, I'm not going to mention the um, other roofing company's master elite name, but they, they went out there, the gentleman had a leak, 
The company went out to the house. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, we'll fix that for you. They fixed the leak. They put a new roof on. Started leaking again. Okay, instead of doing something simple in their process and the application of the roof, mm -hmm. they said, well, that's not our fault. Even though you're supposed to have that master lead warranty and that, yep. that gold pledge warranty, right? Right. They said, it's your, it's your architect who built the house. So why didn't you tell me that before you started the roof? Right. So you kind of just took my money and ran. And that's what we don't do here. No. You know what I mean? We give you a roofing system right. to where the shingles and four or five other components with that roofing system right. gives you that gold pledge warranty that it's soup to nuts. And, and it will cover yeah. everything pretty much for 50 plus years. Exactly. So, yeah. No, no I mean, you can't beat that. To, to have a reputation that GAF will back you up, you know, on, on our different roofing systems that we have, you know, the uh, Systems Plus, you know, you use three of the GAF products, mm -hmm. which will give you a lifetime warranty, just not all the bells and whistles and, and the certain components that doesn't, you know, let, let's use this as instance. Um, so what the lifetime warranty means is that like after a certain amount of time, it's a limited lifetime warranty. So prorated, uh, prorated for 10 years up to, you know, algae resistant and, and things of that nature. Craftsmanship. Um, craftsmanship, stuff like that, okay. So let's get into the silver pledge. Okay, so now the silver pledge will act you, um, you know to, to remove the roof not just repair it to remove the roof you know if there was a workmanship or a manufacturer defect okay so now they, they'll cover everything right. okay up to um 15 years right. okay prorated 15 years now the the master i'm sorry the gold pledge mm -hmm. the gold pledge will cover it up prorated 25 years and that's everything soup to nuts as long as you use the five components and that would be starter strips underlayments um not not the shingles isn't one of them but the ridge vent mm -hmm. um and the cap shingles yep so and and the weather watch so if you use those five components they will cover everything there is no better warranty on the market no nope. um no better training no better education i mean just they have done so much for it and i've wanted to be a part of that you know what i mean um and there's if you actually go onto our website Vic, do you want to yep. go on to the website there We've never did this before, so bear with us here. You can actually go on our website to read more and learn more about our, uh, what's that? Colin saying, who's the old guy? Oh, yeah, Tom, what's up? <laughs> All right, Colin, I hear you. Uh -huh. I see you down there having fun. Yeah, he is, isn't he? So if you um, go on to our website here, let me go on to our website here which is either go on the TC backer or www.321 got her done. So I'm just going to do the TC backer thing here and see what happens. Dover PA. So John boy over at flash Ave, he, um, hooked us up and it appeared to be the first thing that popped up, but up at the very top there up here, it says roofing warranties. Mm -hmm. Um, you can click on that, but I just noticed that it's down here. So here we are. So system plus, okay, there is a little bit of difference. You do get the system plus limited warranty. It says for the details. So pretty much down to you got your 50 year smart choice protection period for 50 years. Okay. Uh 10 year, 10 years for stain guard, labeled shingles, or ridge caps. So not only are your shingles covered, but your ridge caps are also right. shingled. So you got a win warranty. Uh, for a term of 15 years when proven limited when warranty no maximum wind speed limitation so that gives you as long as you're using the starter strips and the three components you get an unlimited wind rating is what that means okay so it requires installation of the layer lock labeled shingle four nails per shingle only four nails okay with the new HDZ shingles mm -hmm. all right um, at least four qualifying accessories. So this must be the silver. Nope, that's the System Plus. So this says four on the System Plus. But at least four qualifying accessory products, including starters, starter strip shingles, eaves and rakes, ridge caps, shingles, roof deck protection, and choice of attic ventilation or leak barrier. And what we can do, we can get into um, some of these components. We, we actually have some some visual tools and visual aids here that we can break out later once we get back on our 
live feed here, but I just like to go over some of this because to show you the difference between, you know, our where our good, better, best is. So our system plus is our good. You know what I mean? So at the good here, down at the very bottom here, this it says tear off. So it's not covered when necessary. Or no, it is covered when necessary. And then disposal is not covered. And then workmanship is not covered. Okay? And that's because anyone who even isn't a master elite can right. offer a system plus. Okay? But then when you step over here to the silver pledge. Right. Okay? The silver pledge can only be installed by a master elite and the gold pledge warranty, limited warranty. So when you scroll down through here and you look straight across, you got your 10 year smart choice wind protection, 10 year, 50 year, 50 year, and 50 year, okay? You got your same 10 year on your stain guard, you got your 15 year on the, the wind warranty term, but it comes with a limited wind warranty, no maximum wind speed limitation. That means if you use all four components with the Silver Pledge warranty, that you basically have an unlimited wind warranty on your roof. That means it can, the wind can blow 180 mile an hour, and if it blows off, guess what? They're going to cover you. What happens if I want to sell my home, Todd? If you want to sell your home? Yeah, what happens to that warranty? Does it go the, away? The warranty is actually transferable once. So it's, it behooves me yes. to go and get that. Yeah, exactly. It's like in, you're investing in your home. Correct. Who wouldn't want to sit at the settlement table with the GAF lifetime warranty in their hand to say, look, you know, this, look, you're not just going to get a house, but you're going to get a home with a lifetime GAF warranty with it, not just on the workmanship, but backed by the manufacturer. So if we go out of business tomorrow, right. guess what? GAF's going to pay someone else to come out and fix your roof. And that's a beautiful thing that, you know, a tie in, 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 ingrained in my head at a meeting, one seven o'clock meeting we had um, in the morning that, and he said it pretty profoundly, um, and I don't, nobody at this company, um, excuse my term, doesn't get butt hurt, but um, how we're talking to each other and we respect each other, but there's certain things that be, need to be driven home. And what, what I pulled from that meeting was that, you know, whether I'm here or not in five years from now or 15 years from now, our, our purpose in life is not to come back and repair your roof. We're not trying to upsell you. So me, me, myself as a design consultant, we're not upselling you to use these products because they cost more. Right. We're doing it because GAF saying, I'm going to warranty that thing from start to finish and even tear off and even disposal right. with the gold pledge, right? Exactly. So we don't, whether Tom is here or not or whether whoever's here or not, Ty's like, I got to live another 15 to 30 years running this business and I don't want to go back fixing roofs because we didn't learn how to sell a system that's going to last a lifetime pretty much. Exactly. And you nailed it. I'm glad you heard that because that was the point I was trying to make. You know, even when I'm gone, let's say you guys decide to take this thing over and it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm out. I'm done. I'm retiring. It's up to, there's three or four of you guys because I know it's going to take more than one person no, to no. run this. Hopefully at that point, you know, especially if there's going to be different locations. Okay, you don't want to have to clean up a mess that someone did that no even longer works here. Do you know what I mean? So it's important that with not only knowing how to install, but to install it correctly. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like like that that position that we were put in by another roofing contractor that refused to come out and fix their stuff. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, the house was probably 20 years plus old okay well it probably didn't leak before the roofer showed up right so whoever the existing roofer was did it right the first time okay right. now the age of the roof it was showing age the customer called somebody they went out they put a roof on but because of lack of education and that was the learning experience for me once again for you for me and everyone else sitting in that room when we were talking about this was that we don't want to be that company right we need educated, skilled, trained people on that roof to inspect that roof, to come across situations like that that might require special attention. And that's all it took. Mm -hmm. It took just a little extra special attention. Okay, so we're $500 more expensive, but let me explain to you why. We have to remove your siding. We have to, we have to expose the wall. We have to make sure it's flashed correctly. And then where your brick return is, it has to be flashed correctly to the roofing system. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? It, this is my, but we're, when we're done here, guess what? We're going to hand you a piece of paper. Actually, we're not even going to hand it to nope. you. It's G coming straight from GAF. Yep. That's why. 
I don't know if they're going to come out and inspect that. Right. They, they'll come out anytime they want to. I have no idea. And what he's talking about is the due diligence, that they come out and inspect the roofs on random. But the, the warranty does come from GAF itself. Absolutely. And, you know, I was talking to a client just to dovetail and, and pivot, and, and it, 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 it rings true here, too, because I, I, I went out, I took the window out to her, and I'm, I'm talking about windows, and I, I had to educate her on windows, her mm -hmm. and her husband. I said, listen... I said, windows are nothing but plastic and glass. Right. I said, it's what you put in the glass. It's what you put in the vinyl. Mm -hmm. It's what you put in low E and how much you fill the argon. Some people say they have full argon in their window. Some people use 25% and say they have argon in their window. It's not true. There's different fills. Right. So she called me back today and I'm driving. And I said, mm -hmm. hey, how you doing? Did you make a decision? I have to pick up my window. You can't put it in your house because mm -hmm. I left it there for them. Mm -hmm. And she said, we did make a decision. We want to go with you over this other company. And she said, you educated me. I said, what do you mean? She goes, when you told me that you can have the best window, which we do, mm -hmm. $500 to $2,000 less than any other of the big boys. Right. $500 to 2000 Let me say that again. $2,000 less right. than any I know windows. Mm -hmm. um, it's my strong point. Right. But she said to me, she goes, Tom, what, what resonated with me is that you're a bona fide company. You're not chucking the truck. She used those terms. Mm -hmm. And she said <laughs> that if I have the best window in the world, and dovetailing back to the roof. Mm -hmm. The best roof in the world and the components. And she said, if I have the worst installation on that window, it's worthless. It and is. that's what I told her. Mm -hmm. And she said that back to me. Mm -hmm. She goes, so can you come out Friday, I'll sign the contract and we'll go ahead and get your window back to you. Nice. But it's the same thing. If you have the great products of that roof yeah. and it's installed and they're not trained, the roofers, yes. right? Or, yeah. or, or workers, yeah. then it, it's worthless. Yes. Yeah, you can have the best product in the world and ruin somebody's roof. Right. If it's not installed correctly. And I was out one yesterday and they worked their butts off. Yeah, man. You know, I take them Gatorades and I take them pretzels and water. Nice. You know, and all that stuff. And yeah. they, they really bust it. Yeah, man. They do. We got the greatest guys in the world. I really feel that way. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it takes a team, it takes a unit, man. That make, you know, they, they cash that check your ass wrote. Right. You, you know what I mean? We need them. We, we rely on them to do that, to be educated. It's our responsibility to educate them to make sure that they're installing the products correctly. I mean, we can go up there with five components of GAF and still not do the job right. Right. How horrible would that be? Yeah. You know, and I don't want to, I don't want to be faced with that. Not that things aren't going to happen. Things are going to happen. Vic was just telling me and reminded me again tonight that on average, on average, Tom, we do 80 rooms a week. But then I didn't, I, I reminded him, but you're counting those 10 unit townhomes as one. Right. They're, they're 10, 10 individual. 10. So realistically, if we wanted to cheat a little bit, that we're about around a buck, buck 20 a week. Well, it's not average. cheating, that's reality. Right. It's still a home. It's still a home. Yes. Right. And that's how everyone else counts it. So we, we do about 100 to 120 roofs a week. And I can't even, I, I, would, I would be confident enough to say that we wouldn't have issues, and I'm gonna knock on wood. I don't even know if I wanna say this. Go ahead. But I'm gonna say it anyhow. Not hard. Right, but I, honestly, I don't think we have issues with 1% of them. 1%. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? If there is an issue, it's probably normally an act of God. Storm came through shortly after we installed the roof. Um, you know, I've gone out and done repairs on roofs 10 years after we installed them that had nothing to do with anything that we did wrong, any any type of workmanship issue, we just did. Right. That's just what we do. We're still in business. Right. We're actually removing shingles off brand new homes that were built 25 years ago today. That's how long we've been around. This is how long we've been doing this. What an awesome feeling. That just gave me goosebumps. We're tearing roofs off new homes that, mm -hmm. that were built 20 plus years ago today. We're putting new roofs on them today. Right. What a wonderful feeling that is. Wouldn't it be great that the next generation would be able to replace that roof again in, in 25, 30 years from now from the same exact company? And it's funny when you go out to these three tabs or even a lot of times the arch architectural shingles and um, they, uh, they weren't installed properly. They didn't have the components and we're looking at a 30 year shingle that looks like it's been on there for 50, right. 50, 60 years, and it's only 10 years old. Right. Ones that we didn't install. Right, correct. We didn't install them. Yeah. But right. I'll go out and I'll say, how old is that? 10 years. 10 what? Right. You want to know what 70%, 70, 70%, I believe, of, of homes that were built 
in the past 15 to 20 years why they feel 70% of them have inadequate ventilation. ventilation. Yep, guaranteed. <clears throat> guaranteed has nothing to do with workmanship. Right. You know what I mean? You would think, ah, it's probably workmanship or crappy built him or whatever. We don't want it too hot up there. We don't want it too cold. Right. No, exactly. We basically want it the same temperature as it is outside. outside. Yeah. Whether it be, you know, 30 degrees outside, we want that attic 30 degrees. If it's 100 degrees outside, we basically want it to be 100 degrees right. without any type of, you know, reasoning to create condensation. Right. You, you know what I mean? Um, but it, it's it's ventilation. Ventilation is huge. The codes were different back then. The 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 education, the uh, technology was what I was looking for. The technology was different to measure things like that. Right. You know how many square feet is your attic floor space? That gives you how much ridge vent you need, how much intake you we need. We did those calculations in training one day. Right. Like who knew that back then? I, I, I didn't know it. Did. I, I didn't know it at right. all. So. You know, and, and I think most homeowners think, let's go up there and let's just start blowing insulation everywhere. Don't do it. And pack that E full. Don't do it. No. You, you gotta breathe. breathe. You gotta breathe. You gotta let it breathe. Your health, it, it breathes. Well, let's talk about condensation because, you know, you go, you know, fact check me, but I'm probably pretty accurate. Um, all the, the water and condensation from your house rises to your attic. And a human body can do three gallons a day. Yep. That's not including cooking. That's not including showers. That's not including anything else in plants. the house. Other people. Yeah. Plants. Yeah. And all that conversation is running up to your, to um, to yeah, your attic space. Yeah. And man. if you don't have the correct ventilation, you're yeah. gonna have problems. No. And we'll bring that up as a topic one night, um, because they have a good clip mm -hmm. of that. So we'll we'll bring that up one night. We'll talk about the moisture that's created in your home and by what. Washers, dryers. I never knew it. Washing never. dishes, the steam that comes off your sink, um, your dishwasher. Okay? Boiling water. Yeah, you're boiling water, your plants, you're, you're breathing air, taking a shower. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Nobody thinks about that. What You know, they'll go up in their attic and, and you wouldn't know it, but the, the exterior of your home looks fine, but you go, go up in your attic and you're like, well, why do I see like these weird, and I don't want to use... Um, the word, the, um, the, the black growth. stuff, the yeah, growth, the growth. What, why am I seeing growth in my attic? Well, is your bathroom vent venting into your attic? Um, is your uh, oven, the range hood, where's that venting to? Do you, do you know what I mean? Was that properly ventilated? Right. Okay. I've seen showers. I've seen showers. People, their shower vents do so much damage to the interior of an attic that mm -hmm. I've never, you would think that the house was leaking. And coming from a bath company where I came from before, bath windows and mm -hmm. stuff like that, uh, if you're getting a remodel of a bathroom, right, make sure they vent it outside, right, not in the attic, because you're gonna have some serious problems. Right on, man. You're gonna have the word we don't wanna use, it's that growth stuff. Right on. And condensation. Yeah, man, condensation. It's, it's all it's going up there. Think about it, and, and like, let's say if you're losing heat in the winter time, okay, all that heat that's hitting that cold attic space, what yeah. do you think it's gonna do? Freeze. It's gonna create condensation right. and it'll freeze. freeze. And then I've seen it where it freezes on, on the underside of your decking and on the rafters, then when it warms up, it'll start dripping, okay? So then let's, let we're, we talked about the attic space, now let's talk about ice damming, okay? Yep. So when you're losing that heat through your roof, They're okay? chasing each other. Yeah. So you're losing the heat. You got six inches of snow on your roof. So what happens is, is during the day it starts to melt. It's kind of like a, an icicle. During the day it gets bigger, 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 bigger. Well, what happens is it starts to dam in your gutter. So basically you have an icicle in reverse. As it's running down your roof, it's freezing back up underneath your shingles. Yep. You, you know what I mean? And then gets into your attic space. You know, or I've seen icicles coming out of the soffit area. And that's why they say, being a master elite, we have to run 24 inches yep, warm wall. 24 inches inside the warm wall. It can back up all at once. It doesn't matter. Why? Because we installed the correct underlayment. Right. And that's the whole point of the components that go with it. There's a reason why. If you would lose half your roof, if half the shingles blew off, your house should be 90% still watertight. Right. If the components that we used were installed correctly. Right. You know, that's huge, especially huge. down around the beach area, even around here. How many windstorms? Christ, it seems like it's been so windy this year already. 
It's coming and coming and changing and changing throughout every year. Yes. It's changing. Right. Right now, we're at 90 degrees, 92 degrees today. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Three days ago, it was what? 37 degrees at night. It was, I yeah. think it was, we left here one night. I don't know what night it was. Probably last Wednesday. Last Wednesday or something, or Tuesday. I don't know when it was. But when we left here, it was 37 degrees. And you said, what, it was like 80 something today? 92. 92? When I was driving. Really? Yes. Wow. That's insane. Mm -hmm. And what? It, what, what? Or May, May whatever. Yeah, May 18th. 19th. 19th. Yeah. That's crazy. So you want to go over some of these components? Yeah, we can do that, man. So the underlayment. This is our preferred here. That's our preferred felt buster. And ice and water. I'll be Vanna White. Yeah. With... There you bald go. shiny head yeah so what that is what what happens here and what we should probably do is show people that when you attach this to your roof decking it actually seals around it. the nail will seal around this it's made so there's a sticky membrane back here this is like a piece of tape almost mm -hmm. and when it heats up believe me you're not getting it you're, this isn't coming off your house ever especially the good stuff look I can't even peel the plastic off the back there you go. So, once once you fasten this, attach this to the roof, whether it be with staples, whether it be with cap nails, whether it be with nails, okay, or nails from the shingles, this stuff's not going anywhere, and it seals. It seals around it. You know what I mean? I'm and with that's you. that's we use that in all of our valleys. Twenty four inches inside the warm wall. I mean, it's great stuff. This stuff here. Okay, worth it. Yeah, well, we did. I did. I made a fool out of myself one night. Did you? Yeah, I did. So I won't. I won't. Don't do that. try. You're strong. Right. <laughs> no, well, Keith did it. I I did said the same thing to Keith, and he grabbed a hold of it and he raised it. He's that guy to come do a phone book, right? He can whip a phone book. Yeah. Ahead. I was like, dude, give me that. I'm like, did you? Is there like the grain? Does the grain go one way? Like you you can't rip it cross grain. But anyhow, what I like about this, not only does this keep your house watertight, but it's safer for our guys. Mm -hmm. This this has traction on it. So when you put this on, even when it's moist and damp out, the guys won't slip and slide Sorry. off the roof. So not only do we use this for, for the comfort of the homeowner, but for the safety for our guys. Yep. And that's what I love about this stuff. It's great. And they, they have multiple different kinds that, that will prove as long as you're using this. And, you know, and this is what some contractors use and, and everybody wants to know why, why, you know, why is your invoice or your, your estimate a little more expensive? Well, that's why. Because we're not using organic fell paper. It's cardboard. Yes. Cheap cardboard. Right. And this stuff here, and I'm going to try it. I, I, I can't, I can't rip it. No, I can't either. Nope. And we don't, and imagine walking on this when it's 90 degrees out. You slip and bust your ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's then there's an extra liability, you know, for the homeowner and us. But we put this on the roof. Our guys, you know, along with being tied Tied off, off. Yeah, feel man. comfortable. Absolutely, and that's what we want them to be comfortable and safe. We want the homeowner comfortable and safe. We want our guys comfortable and safe. But yeah, that's organic, which is what I grew up installing. This synthetic, man. I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. I could be wrong. Maybe fifteen. But um, it, I would say it has really started to gain traction probably over the past eight years. A lot of guys are starting to go with this. Um, and, and I wanted to mention one other thing when it comes to the lifetime warranty. If you are a home owner um, that is getting house home built, okay? So these warranties not only apply for like a, a re-roof, but if you're getting a new home built, these these warranties also apply for new construction homes as well. So like our than our partners. Yep, yep. So we have a builder in Delaware, uh, Evergreen Homes, builds a great, fantastic house, wonderful product. They do not mess around whatsoever. We give them a silver pledge warranty on every single roof, every single home that they build. They don't play around. That's insane. Yeah. So just to throw that out there, because I know there's a lot of new homes being built right now, and, and there might be some local builders out there with some local people getting ready to you know go over design and pick shingles and stuff. I would highly recommend. You don't have to use us. You can go on GAF's website right. and find um, local master elite contractors and uh, check out their reviews. Check out our reviews. Get some referrals. We always say to people, get three estimates. Right. Get three estimates. I'm not afraid to say that. I'm not either. Dude, I'm not. A, I'm not afraid to 
explain to the homeowner either why we're fifteen hundred dollars more. At the end of the day, if it's fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, and you're getting a lifetime roof component warranty, right? It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer if if you if you're going to stay in that home, or if, even if you're not, because you can transfer. So it's 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 value added services that we offer, and it's an investment. It's your house. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's most people's biggest investment. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And you're investing in your investment, like you were saying earlier. Wouldn't it be great to, to go to the settlement table and be like, here, there you go. Wouldn't it be great to put it on the MLS listing? Absolutely. Hey, this, boom. Yup. Has a lifetime roof. Yup. That's right. Golden pledge. Roof. That's the biggest probably, right? Unless you want to do an addition or something like that. That's your biggest investment on, on a house. Absolutely. That then siding probably somewhere in there. Right. Top one, two. Right. Well, both of which siding, siding can improve your property value by seven, 17%. You just found that out last week. Yeah, 17% yep. when you beautify your home. You On know. top of the outrageous prices that are out there right now. Right, <laughs> right, right. But again, it's, it, it's it's one of those things. If, you, if you're trying to sell your home, a lot of people don't want to put the money in it, but you, you get a return on that investment. Yep. You know what I mean? Especially with a lifetime warranty. And we have good, better, best warranties that both have the lifetime prorated warranties with it. So you don't have to go for all the bells and whistles and all five components. We can go with the three components, which I wouldn't want to go any less than that because we're talking about this again. We're right. talking about using stuff like this. Right. You know what I mean? Because I hear all the time, people are like, oh, we plan on moving in 12 months. Okay. You know, and this is why you should even more do it. Right. Or I'll hear an older couple say, man, we just, we don't think we're going to be around in eight years. Okay. That's great. But do you want your kids or grandkids to have to worry about this when you're gone? Right. Aren't you trying to get your ducks in a row so your family don't have to worry about things after you're gone? Well, the roof is probably one of the most expensive things that they're going to have to worry about opposed to your burial. Yep. You, you know what I mean? If you don't have those things lined up and, and taken care of, you know. It's and funny. I was down in New Bridgeville yesterday in the boonies mm -hmm. looking at a... A standing seam roof that I was gonna um, uh, that I have to quote, excuse me. And um, I passed this house and it was beautiful. It was up on a hill and it had a first sale sign. And the first thing I noticed because when you become a home improvement person, mm -hmm. you look at tons of roofs every, every day, day. <laughs> every right. day. Right. And the biggest eyesore, this land was perfect. It was up on a hill, huge house, mm -hmm. right? Blue siding, window white trim, all that decked out. Mm -hmm. Went right to the roof. Streaming and all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So the streaks, yeah, on the streaks. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. I wonder, I wonder if they would have put the roof on, could they have got even more money for that house? Right. Because it's not sold yet. And the yes. biggest investment on that biggest that big house. Right. The client's gonna go in there. The excuse me, the home, the proposed homeowner mm -hmm. that's gonna write a contract is gonna say, how much are you gonna give me for a new roof? Because I'm gonna come off your sales price. Absolutely. We hear about that all the time, all the time. You know, and and and. The other scenario to that is too is they do knock it off the bill, and then that the 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 prospective buyer usually calls us after they purchase yep. the home because they they put money in escrow for it. Yep. So you either do it up front or you have to do it at, at on the back end. Yep. And that's what I always tell people: Do you want to pay for it now or later? Yes. You know what I mean? Why why play around with it? So here are the shingles. We should probably do some shout outs. What time is it? So, anyhow, let's do some shout outs quick. I see Baker's out there, man. He's still alive and kicking. I think he's having a good time down there at the beach. So, Chris Baker, good to see you. Alan Tyson, yeah, man, it does, it, it is way better than the black old felt paper. Uh, Jana, good to see you, honey. Chuck in a truck. Yeah, it does <laughs> seal around the nails, buddy. Tamara, what's up, girl? Woo! -hoo. Component. That's right. Component. Uh, who else is on here? Vic, Torino, Chris Baker, Janet, Chuck in the truck, David Bruno, ventilation, that's right, brother. It's key, man. That's that's 70% of roofs that need new roofs is, is because due to poor ventilation or something not venting correctly. Uh, Lauren, good to see you. Miss you, homie. Chris Baker, I'm sure she's talking about you. <laughs> Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people on there. Where's everybody at tonight? Two things on there. Tina? Yeah. yeah, she's on there. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. That wasn't me to you, Tina. That's... Hey, babe. You to him. Or <laughs> wig. <laughs> Sometimes my phone's a little behind, too, so that could be some of it. Ronnie, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for all your hard work. Chuck's on there. Chuck and the truck. 
Um, I don't think David Katz, my man, always on there. Um, who else? Colin. Tamara. Yeah. yeah Tamara. Tamara. Colin wants to know who that old dude is. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, Enrique, good to see you, brother. Thanks for watching every week. He's probably still out working, but watching. Um, or on his way home. I've seen someone mention Kim. Do 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 do. I don't know if she's on there yet or not. Wow. What's that say? Shout out to all the guys who help and support me. Yep, no doubt, Norm. Thank goodness for the team. No doubt. Gretchen, good to see you. It is a team. You have a gold mine in it, Tom. Absolutely, he's amazing at what he does. Most definitely, man. That's why he's on here tonight. There's Kim. Lewis, my man. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for watching. Tabitha Miller, good to see you. Thanks for watching. Do, 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 do. Keep going. So there's a lot more people on there than I thought. Mm -hmm. um, good. Oh, before I forget, I think the weather outside might be the problem. Is it raining? I don't know. Chuck just said that, though. Um, but uh, Perry's birthday, guys, is tomorrow. No, really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So Perry's birthday is tomorrow. Um, do, 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 do. And then uh, Brian Collins is on Monday. But but the, the most important thing about Brian is that he's going in for dialysis tomorrow. So everyone keep Brian in your prayers tonight. Um, he's a good dude. Yeah. He, he's like I said to Lauren the other day. He's kind of like the lubrication in the gears, man. He he humps the trailers. He makes sure the, the job sites have the, the equipment, the material that they need. Um, Does anything you ask him to Anything. Do. All the time. Gets all supplies for the office. Yep. Makes air and runs. Yep. Cleans up the, the sites. Gets to the dump. Yep. Just funny guy, too. Just great, great to be around. You know, and Brian was, um, is still one hell of a mechanic. Um, Brian has worked for me on and off over the years for quite some time. Um, he remembers when my office was at the house. He was with us then. And, and I always um, compare him to Denny. Brian was my Denny back in back the day. Then. Yeah, back in the day, Brian had some injuries, personal injuries and stuff like that, not work-related injuries over the years where he can, he would still do it, believe me. I've, I've watched him hump, you know, 32 foot ladders and get on the roof and, right. and do all kinds of stuff. Um, but having his knowledge and know-how and experience, you know, not that he's, you know, not the mechanic anymore that's actually installing, but to have him on our job sites when we can't be there, you know, knowing that he's there watching, you know, what the guys are doing, making sure they got what they need, making sure they're safe, hydrated, you know, tied off, um, things are clean, he'll run the magnet. He'll take care of his trucks, he takes yeah. pride in that stuff. Absolutely, man. Just, Oil changes religiously. And yes, just a great, great, great guy. Love him to death, man. So, Brian, if you're watching or if your wife is watching. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for everything that you do. And Scotty. Scotty, too. Can't forget about Scott. No, Scotty. His little Scott kick. Scott. <laughs> um, you know, you guys are, all of you guys are just the greatest. Everybody is a team. I, I mean, I could go on and on. I actually made a list, which I forgot to bring it with me tonight, with everybody's name on it. Because I hate when I start to right. mention, like, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who did I leave out? Yes, who I'm sure that, that I have. Um, but Gio, he's another good one. Enrique and his crew, Gio and his boys. Um, you know, you got Tate and Michael and, and uh, Cody and Ricky. Right. Ricky's back in, in the swing of things again. Um, you know, making everybody laugh, doing goofy things and silly things and making little mistakes here and there. But you know what? It's, it's, it's a growing experience for all of us. You, you know what I mean? And, um, and again, we're just, you know, we're trying trying to figure this thing out one day at a time and, and I, I feel like we're doing a great job but uh, thank you everybody I wanted to give everybody a shout out though um, Colin give me get give him my vacation days who Brian all right well, we'll we'll look into that I appreciate you saying that Colin um, you know Amen. yeah man that's good stuff man I think you stepped up once before I think when Cody uh, Cody got injured snowboarding with you guys that one time last winter, I think, that you stepped up and wanted to donate your uh, your hours. But, yeah, he uh, said that uh, we'll just try to do something for Brian. Told him to reach out to me when he gets back. Right on. We'll figure something out. Yeah. And there's a lot of personalities here, you know, and we talk about culture, and I feel 
everybody has a different term for culture wherever you've been. Right. Um, with the companies that you've been with in, in, in you know, out there in, in Facebook land. But right. I think cultures I think culture is unspoken. Yeah. When you can just blend a bunch of people together from different backgrounds. We've all had our trials, tribulations. We all have our issues every single day in our personal lives. And, and we come from all walks of life and we, we just all blend together. Mm -hmm. And it, I can't even explain it. It's just, it's one unit. And, you know, and we just get everything done that we need to get done. It's con I call it, I love it because it's controlled chaos. Yeah. And, right. you know, and I was thinking about mm -hmm. this when I was staring at you today in the office. I was like, my mind just never shuts off. But, you know, I was like, I wonder if that son of a gun wanted to see how long I was going to be a persistent pain in his ass. And, and then I said, well, maybe he, he, he wanted to see if he wanted me to be part of his team, you know, and, and when, when I was chasing you down. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I, I'm going to ask until I hear the word no. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I am in yeah. the house, and that's the way I am with you. And, and yeah. I just kept it up. And I think it's a privilege and an honor for anybody to be here. Is it perfect? No. And I was making it sound like roses and gravy or whatever, but... It, it's pretty damn near perfect um, as far as the team concept is going. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate you. There was a little bit of that in there. I, I, I wanted to see how you took rejection. Mm -hmm. You told me that. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you passed better than anybody. I just I'll be I don't deal with it <laughs> until I hear no. Right. <laughs> I will come to your do right. I'll come to your door. Right. I hear yeah. no. He's in a meeting. Yeah. I see a camera. He's in there. Right. <laughs> I'm just yeah. Yeah. We talk about the food drive? Yeah, let's talk about the food drive real quick before we get off here. Um, it looks like we're, we're run, winding down, but uh, we'll get back. So when Chris gets back next week, what we'll actually do is, is we'll circle back to, uh, we'll finish off the, the shingles and portion of it in the five-part roofing system for the, for the Gold Pledge roofing system, which it's kind of cool that we ran out of time. It'll kind right. of give us some content for next week. Lead into. Yeah, exactly. But right now, our biggest focus right now is our first annual food drive, okay, which is happening June 17th, um, which benefits the well, um, which is over at the L Lutheran Un Union. Lutheran. Okay. That's a tongue twister mm -hmm. for me. But anyhow, it's a uh, check. Check out our donation station from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. That'll be at 408 West Market Street, York, PA, 17401. Um, what they are looking for is uh, peanut butter and jelly, mac and cheese, canned fruit, canned vegetables, size 5 diapers. I don't know why. That's just what they asked for. They won't fit me. They won't fit me either. Okay. They did last year. Did they? Yeah. But got the COVID-20 like I did. I did. I got, I got the, the COVID-20. <laughs> yeah, sir. 20 extra pounds. Yep. Um, laundry detergent, toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, deodorant, razors, shaving cream, soap, body wash, and all personal care items. Um, those are the things that they asked for that, that seems to be like the most expensive for them. Um, so, so far we've generated um, seven, eight, eight fifty dollars um, in uh, donations. And then Colin and his softball team had donated some stuff. And I know the girls in the office gathered some stuff up so it was going to be may 22nd we postponed it to june 17th um we are actually going to do pickups um so if any local businesses want to get involved you know put a box out you know whether if your customers coming through want to donate stuff if you guys want a flyer tamara reach out to tamara at the office 717-650-2197 Check her out. She'll hook you up with a flyer that you can hang. Um, on the 16th, we'll swing by. We'll pick it up. We'll email blast to all your employees. Yep, yep. If anybody that wants to get involved, let us know. This is going to be a great cause. We're going to have... I'm hoping to, to fill multiple trucks um, and perhaps maybe even the 16-foot box truck would be great. If we could just pack that sucker full, all meet down there at 4 o'clock, unload the truck, yep. along with... You know, anyone local can stop by between one to four right. on the seventeenth. Bring if you got one can of of uh, vegetables or fruit. You know, you can't tell me that everyone didn't go out and do that compulsion buying. Right. Okay. So I think at this point in time, everybody needs to clean out their cupboards <laughs> and replenish and get fresh stuff in there. So go home tonight, open up your cupboard, see what you can get rid of. If you got five things of Jiffy. You know, in your cover, I think you can spare at least two or three of them, Jiffies. Okay, I don't think we're gonna run out of peanut butter anytime soon. No, nope. or jelly, 
or, or toilet paper or toilet paper you know what I mean? So come out, check it out. Pastor Joel, great guy. It's it, it's where we did the 21 Turkey Salute. He's already asked me several times, are you sure you guys are still interested in doing the 21 Turkey Salute? I said, absolutely. There's like, like more of a more like a 25 Turkey Salute. We're going to keep it 21, but we'll, we'll top. We'll but I'm just saying, we had some extra. We had to... Oh, we, had yeah. to, we had to cook up for, for... Yes, we did 30. Right, is that what it was? Yeah, 30 total. And it's funny that we know we're going to run over a little bit, but I think we're okay with that. Yeah. That, you know, we always have team building with this company. Yeah, man. So I wasn't even hired yet. I was still ground, ground, uh, pounding the pavement to get in your door. Right. But I went to the 21 Turkey Salute. Yeah. Then we had we had a ball with some stun guns. Mm -hmm. I have one at my house. Yeah. Um, who, who stunned me? Chuck stunned me yeah. and, and all that stuff. So that was another team building. So now here on June 17th, we're going to have another team building thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just, that's how it becomes a unit. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's how you get to know people within Dude, your... I, I got to realize how much pain Chuck could handle. Yeah. Tolerate. That man can tolerate some pain. <laughs> he handles it like a little B-I-C-T-H. But it, if you got hit that much... Lauren, I'm sorry. I, Lauren, I'm sorry I pushed you and I, I wigged out when I got stunned. But Chuck, I love you, man. You're my man. I think Lauren's going to try to get working with comp on her back from when that happened. Right. Hey, Pam Liss, good to see you. Yeah, Cullen gave all his uh, peanut butter to the Fox the other night. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Yeah. So, um, did Tommy give us a picture yes, tonight? Yeah. Yep. Okay, did we go over everything? We went over the food drive. We started to touch on our five uh, components, uh, gold pledge warranty. Um, we can talk about our $500 gift card that we have that we're presenting. Um, so, do you want to talk about that a little bit? You can go ahead. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Okay. So, basically what this is, is if... Okay. So, no, let's save that for next week because that uh, we can tie that in with Dr. Shingle. Right. Okay. Maybe Dr. Shingle will make an appearance. Um, and then, Baker, prepare yourself for next week so we can finish off the second part, part two of the GAF warranty. Um, and then, we'll talk about our $500 coupon. Um, if you go on our website, you can read more about it. Uh, click on, you should see the Dr. Shingle um, about our roof uh, checkups yeah. and our gutter checkups. So check that out. And then there's there's other opportunities to receive a $500 gift card. And that roof, roof checkup and all that good stuff is priced right. So if you yeah. are in any doubt whether you need a new roof or not, mm -hmm. please go to that website. It doesn't cost you too much of anything. And if you buy or purchase or invest in a roof, it goes right back to you anyway. Right. So we do a lot when we come out to check your roof. We get Absolutely. on the roof. We make sure everything's kosher. Um, right. And that fee will go right back to you when you invest in a roof with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, did you said Tommy got, uh, gave us a, yep. a poster. One thing I do want to mention about food drive. Mm -hmm. um, the food drive committees decided that they're going to put a box out in the warehouse for the guys okay. that they want to donate, whatever they can donate, we'll cool. put the box out tomorrow. Awesome. Um, and of course, we're still taking any kind of monetary donations. Absolutely. We'll kick it in. Yeah. Do yeah. Someone ran out of time, didn't have time to go to the grocery store, clean out their cabinets. One dollar, five dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever. Every bit counts. I mean, we buy a lot of donuts every week that are left over. Maybe we could just put that toward the food drive because nobody eats them. Don't they? <laughs> Or they get too many. Do they? I was gonna say. I, think I saw they, a bunch of these players out there. I'm like, I want some of that. I think we went one week accidentally and didn't do it, and there was all hell to pay. <laughs> okay, so we got right back on that real quick. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, Alan said uh, bring in a cow prod. Oh, he's gonna bring a, a cow prod in. The That's the foot. stunner. Yes, yes. He, but, he he's a little demented. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know he what I mean? fits so, in. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. All right, um, so I'm gonna throw this poster up. Mm -hmm.
with um, the uh, Cordell Motorsports team. Um, is a car that we sponsor. He had started a, um, a non-profit organization called Racing to Reunite. I always I have to say it that say way. It that way yeah. yeah, I don't know why I can't get it. Keeps your brain going. Yeah. So um, great cause, great dude. He's got other race car drivers involved in it. Um, so what they do is is he'll post these around the racetrack. Um, nice. Certain drivers will actually have a, a picture of whichever um, missing child person um, of the week that Tommy, I don't know where he gets his list of, you right. know, children from or, or adults or whoever's missing, I guess, mostly missing children. Right. Um, but he's got the race car world uh, in, involved with this, so which is a great thing. Um, Tommy's got a young daughter himself, and I think he looks at her every night and, and thanks God that she's in his life today and couldn't imagine being without her so that's why I know that's some of the reason why he's so passionate about racing to reunite so um, I tried but I couldn't do it <laughs> um, so I'll practice that but uh, racing to reunite um, great cause Tommy Cordell you're the man hopefully you're watching Ty must have teased Tom no yes, I did yeah, we lost Ty. audio for a few seconds oh did we yeah gotcha oh I gotcha Right on, but that's cool. You guys have a great night. We this was this was a great episode, Tom. Yeah, thank I love you. It. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate you. you. Did a great. I appreciate everything you do. I appreciate all of our viewers. Baker, we miss you. Um, part two next week. JF uh, Whole Pledge Warranties. We'll go over that. So tune in next week. Thank you guys for watching every week, and we appreciate the support. Peace.